What up everybody? Back again with our area unit. Today we are using perimeter to determine possible areas. So, so let's uncover our objective today. Our objective today, today I will be able to use the perimeter of a rectangle to help determine the possible areas of the same rectangle by making a chart. So if you joined us last lesson, we actually did the opposite of this. We were given the area and we try to find the perimeter and it took a lot of work. We had to make a chart. We had to work out some factors. We had to show our work and today we're going to be doing the exact opposite. Before we start, let's start with some math vocabulary so we're all on the same page. When we talk about perimeter, we're talking about the total length around the edges of a figure. So here we have a figure and if we want to know the perimeter, we would go around the edges and we would go all the way around. Whereas area is the number of unit squares that cover the surface of a figure. So last lesson we did a chart like this. We were given the area, we had to come up with our factors and use those as the dimension for a rectangle because when we're thinking about rectangles and the area of rectangles, we're making an array, which is just a repeated addition multiplication, which is just, which is just a strategy to solve repeated addition multiplication of equations. And then we found the different perimeters and we discovered that you can have the same area but have completely different perimeters because there's more than one way to make most numbers. Today we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to have the same chart but we're going to be giving you the perimeter and we're trying to figure out the dimensions and then do the area. So this question says Elias and his dad are making a raised flower bed to grow crops for the family. They have 20 feet of fencing. What are the possible areas they could make for the raised flower bed? So I'm going to say the possible areas are blank. Okay, um, and we could even say we know our unit's feet, so we could say blank square feet. Now I'm going to go back and look for anything about square feet, areas, or anything that an area could be. So it told me they have 20 feet of fencing. Okay, fencing is very important. Fencing is a keyword they love to use for perimeter, because what do you do with the fence? You go around the edge of a yard or the edge of something. Okay, so when they're talking about 20 feet of fencing, they're saying the perimeter can be 20 feet. So for this one, it's actually a little bit easier and quicker be than going the opposite way when they gave you the area because you don't have to have a list of factors. All you need to be able to do is add. So if I made my length one, okay, so this is kind of just calling the, get, the guess and check strategy, okay? So if we made the length one, we'd have a really small rectangle. And if the length is one, that means the other length also has to be one, okay? There we go, so one and one, which means if we only have 20 total and we subtract two, right, one for each side, that gives us 18 left. So it's not 18 on one side though, because again, we're trying to go around the entire outside. It's gonna be 18 split into two equal groups. Let me show you a tape diagram to kind of help you figure this out. So here's a tape diagram. We're gonna do a part whole model. We know the total is gonna be 20. We know we have two pieces that are one, all right? And then because this is a rectangle, we have four sides. The other two have to be the exact same size. So if I take away two from here, that leaves me with a total of 18 left. If I split 18 into two equal groups, that gives me nine for each one. So my dimensions can be, my length is one, and my width would have to be nine, which means if I now found the area, I do length times width, nine times one is, nine square feet. So now we have a little bit thicker one because our length is going to be two. Again, I just start with one, now I'm going to two, I'm gonna to go to three, and I'm gonna keep going until I can't make any more. So now if our length is two, okay, again, I'm gonna use the same part whole model just to help me model this. I know my total's 20, because when I add up all the sides, if I know that I now have two pieces of two, and then I have two other equal groups, what are those equal groups? Well, if I take away four from 20, that leaves me with 16. 16 divided into two equal groups is eight, which means if my length is two, my width has to be eight, which now when I find the area, length times width, eight times two is going to give me 16 square feet, okay? So I'm using the tape diagram just to help me solve the math, but then I'm labeling the picture. If you don't know what tape diagrams are, you might be completely confused right now. You might want to stop and find a different video or figure out what tape diagrams are, but these are the best visual models out there to show math. If you're a teacher and you're watching this, learn tape diagrams. It will help your kids. 
they'll fight you on it, but they'll learn to love them. So now I'm just going to do three, okay? And so I have one, two, three. So now they'd be even a little bit fatter and a little bit shorter right here, all right? And if my length is three, that means my other length also has to be three. So I'm going to draw my part whole model right here to help me figure this out. So now I have two bigger groups of three. If my total is still 12, what are my other two groups going to be? So if I take away six from this, I have 14. 14 divided by two is going to be seven, which means the area, oh, which means my width is going to be seven. And again, length and width are interchangeable. You can make the length nine and the width one. It doesn't matter because commutative property, and we're just making an array when we do area anyway, okay? So now when I do three times seven, my area for this rectangle will be 21 square feet. Now here in Struck Beats, we're all about showing work, but we're also all about being smart. Now I'm going to look at my chart and I'm going to start to see a pattern. I'm going up one, two, three, and then I'm going down nine, eight, seven. So when you're adding one to your length, you're taking one away from your width. Okay, it makes sense. You're trying to equal 20. So that makes a lot of sense, which means my next length is going to be four feet, which is going to make, make my width six feet. When I multiply length times width, I'm going to get 24 square feet. And then my last one's going to be five and five. And when I multiply that, I'm going to have a area of 25 square feet. Now, some of you are saying, why do you stop? Well, if I make the length six, what's the width have to be? four and then I'm back here to the same rectangle. Or so once I got to five and five, if I keep going, I'm just gonna start going backwards down my chart. I'm gonna make these same rectangles again and there's no point in that. So the possible areas they could make for their raised flower bed, if they made the length nine and the width one, they'd have a nine square foot area. They could have a 16 square foot area. They could have a 21 square foot area. They could have a 24 square foot area. They could have a 25. Some of you are saying, why does this even matter? Well. If you're trying to make the biggest flower bed you can, you want the biggest area. You're gonna want the one with the most, the biggest square feet, because that's gonna give you the most room to grow the most amount of plants. So take a look at this you try problem. If you're ready to try this one by yourself, go ahead and push pause, and then you can push play to check your work. Again, you should be making a chart or have some other problem solving strategy. If you're not there yet, you can do this with me as a we do problem, that's totally fine. So hopefully you just paused it, and now you push play so you can check your work. So the question says, what is the largest area the rectangle could have? My statement's gonna say, the largest area the rectangle could have is blank, square feet, because I know my units are feet. So I'm gonna go back, I'm looking for anything about area or the rectangle. It told me the perimeter of the rectangle 16, what is the largest area they could have? So I'm gonna make the same chart here, okay? And I know that my perimeter is going to be 16 feet, and I'm looking for the largest area possible. So if I have 16 feet, and I just start with one right here, all right, if I have one, here we go, that means this side's gonna be one, so I'm gonna draw my part whole model to help me just do my addition equation. If I have two parts of one, and I know the total is 16, my other two groups have to be equal because they're congruent sides. If I take away the two, that leaves me with 14. 14 divided by two is going to be seven. So if my length is one, my width is gonna be seven, which gives me an area of seven square feet. So now let's make the length two here, all right? There we go, two and two. So if I do my part whole model here just to help me solve the math part out, because now I'm just really doing an addition equation. I know my total is gonna be 16 when I add all the edges, that's my perimeter. If I take out that four, that's gonna leave me with 12 left. And if I divide 12 into two equal groups, that means my width is going to be six, which when I do two and six, that makes my area 12 square feet. And again, at this point, I have now recognized my pattern. Okay, matter of fact, I'm gonna split it up like this, just so I don't get confused. When I'm adding one for, to my length, I'm taking one away. So my next one's gonna be three and five. My next one's gonna be four and four. And then if I did five, I'd have to go back to three over here. So this is all of my different dimensions that I could have. My perimeter is 16 for all of them. I recognize my pattern, so I just kept going. I have 15 square feet if my dimensions were three and five, and if my length and width were four, that would give me the biggest area possible of 16 square feet. So if I had a perimeter of 16, the largest area I possibly could have 
is 16 square feet. Hopefully what you're taking from this is, it's actually a little bit easier to go from perimeter to area because you don't have to take time to find the factors. But more than that, sometimes you have to have a problem solving strategy and you have to use it. You have to persevere, you have to show the work, you might have to draw it out, you have to fill out a chart, and that's okay. Because the math wasn't hard, right? Adding and subtracting and multiplying those smaller numbers, the math isn't hard. What's sometimes hard about math is just getting down to the nitty gritty and just doing the work you have to do to find the answer, right? And that's okay. And you know what? At the end of the day, once you do that hard work, you feel really good when you get the answer correct. And sometimes that's what math is, hard work. Thank you so much for checking us out. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you'll check out our other area unit lessons. We'd love to have you join us. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. We'd, have, we'd love to have you join our Instructor Beats family. You can check out our area and perimeter song. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.